Carolina is now recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I thank the gentleman from Maryland for yielding me this time. Madam Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 264, which will designate the post office located on Charlotte Street in Georgetown, South Carolina, as the Joseph Hain Rainey Post Office Building. I am proud to join with the bill's lead sponsor, Congressman Tom Rice, and the other members of the South Carolina congressional delegation in co-sponsoring this important legislation. This action builds on our efforts in the last Congress to honor the life and legacy of Joseph Rainey by naming H-150, the former House Committee on Indian Affairs Room in the Capitol in his honor. There are just two of the long overdue actions needed to amplify the historical significance of the first African American to serve in the United States House of Representatives. Congressman Rainey was a trailblazer whose story and place in history has been overlooked. As a former history teacher who believes knowing our history is instructive so that we won't repeat the mistakes of our past, I would like to share with you my fellow South Carolinians' legacy. Joseph Rainey, as you heard, was born enslaved in 1832 in Georgetown, South Carolina. His father was able to buy his family's freedom with earnings he made as a barber. As a freedman living in Charleston, Rainey was conscripted, conscripted by the Confederacy in 1862. Rather than fighting to preserve slavery, he and his family fled to Bermuda, where he worked as a barber until the end of the war. Rainey returned to South Carolina after the Civil War and served, as you heard, as a delegate to the 1868 South Carolina Con uh, Constitutional Convention. He was elected to the State Senate in 1870. Later that year, he was elected to Congress in a special election and was sworn into Congress on December 12th 150 years ago, becoming the first black to serve in the House of Representatives. He was the first of several African-American members of this body during Reconstruction, when the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments were enforced, however, imperfectly by the power of the federal government. But Reconstruction was short-lived. Jim Crow laws and white supremacists dismantled multiracial de democracy with voter suppression, nullifications, and violent insurrection. Federal troops were withdrawn from the South following a lot of widespread white supremacy violence during the 1876 election and the subsequent election of Rutherford B. Hayes as president. Joseph Rennie spoke out against the removal of federal protection of voting rights. But in 1878, he lost re-election to former Confederate officer John Smythe Richardson in a district that was, like South Carolina, majority black. Severe gerrymandering reduced the number of black South Carolinians in Congress to one in the 1890s, and when George Washington Mary lost his bid for re-election in 1897, South Carolina's representation in Congress was again all white and remained all white 
for the next 95 years. Segregation and black disenfranchisement were the law of the land until the 1960s. But thanks to the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and its 1982 amendments, I was elected to this August body in 1992. Today, Congress is still grappling with racial issues, voter suppression, and as we witnessed last month, domestic terrorism. It is fitting and proper that we are taking this step as we are celebrating Black History Month. I believe we would do well to learn some of the lessons of American history through Joseph Rainey's experiences. And I hope today's action will help illuminate his story and cause us all to reflect on this legacy. We must not allow the progress we have made to our racial equity since the 1960s retrogress as it did after the 1860s. We truly honor the contributions of Joseph Rainey and all African Americans. We must build on his progress by working together to address our country's long inequities and fulfill the promise of liberty and justice for all. I'll give you back. Thank you.